Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as I come before you to bring your word to your people, I'm just a vessel. I'm a vessel for you to use me, speak to us, open our minds to receive your message, open our hearts to receive you. Amen. Amen. In a few weeks' time, there is a kind of uh, holiday coming up. And I don't know how many of us know it because uh, it's not very much talked about in some places. They call it Veterans Day. Does anybody here know about Veterans Day? When is it? It's November, right? It's supposed to be November 11. Yeah. It may not appear such a significant day for many of us. Some employers don't even care about it. Their people continue working. But in some places, employers allow people to go home because they care about it. But I've enjoyed uh, when I have uh, seen uh, some parades when some cities organize something for them. And you can see in the picture there, some cities organize a parade for these people. And when you see them, they have decorated people, people that give their lives, people that give their time, people that give their youth for a cause. I like watching them because they are beautiful, especially when I see a very old one walking behind them, but still with a lot of energy and a lot of pride because of something that they did and the city claps for them because of those historical things that they did for this nation. They went all over the world and they brought us pride. In uh, today's lesson, and I know it's uh, difficult sometimes to preach about wars because none of us likes wars. When you look about the story of Israelites, they were engaged in wars and they were in fighting with their neighbors, the Syrians. Just like the veterans that we have talked about, there were wars won and sometimes there were defeats. But war is war. Whether fought in 800 BC, as the one we read today, where Elisha was the main character for us, or if it is fought in today, year 2020. I'm reminded of a book uh, written by a Chinese, Chinese called Sun Tzu, and the book is called The Art of War. And it's written about the uh, strategy of war. And I saw one of the things, I have a friend, of my, uh, a brother-in-law of mine who, lo who loves that, that book. And he'll quote to you any time about the strategies to war. And one thing it says is that the art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death. It's a road to either safety or to ruin. What I'm talking about here today is a spiritual thing I'm talking about. I'm talking about things of faith. So the war between the Israelites and the Syrians, or we can say the Arameans, was a matter of life and death to these people. If they capture you, they will never spare you. You are dead. It was therefore troubling to the king of the Syrians when whenever he tried anything, nothing was succeeding. And he was like, what is happening? What's going on here? When I try to go at night, they already know. When I send my spies and they go around them, they already understand this thing. What's going on, my friends? 
What is going on here? And so, this brings us to the theme that I got today, and it's a very interesting theme. Somebody told me, Dad, it, she was like, what is the theme is this? A telescope? Binoculars or insight? You see, in war, the military strategy is to know the capabilities of the enemy so that they can easily attack when least expected. I'm not sure that they had telescopes that we have today, that they can see the enemies from the sky, from, other, other, from the space, wherever the enemy could be coming from, or using the binoculars to see through the thick forest and the valleys and the mountains. But we are not told Israelites used any of those because the Israelites earned something different. They never, de they never depended on the things and the people. They depended on something else. And so Arameans, Arameans would have loved to have all the best equipment. And they were really a big army. They were strong. And I was imagining if they had somebody, you know, if you know somebody called uh, Elon Musk, some of us know him. That guy, he amazes me. I have to read something about him every day. <laughs> he amazes me. Because this guy, if they hand him, this is the guy who has this company that's called SpaceX. He can shoot things to wherever he wants. I hear currently he's trying to go to the Mars. And he says he wants to colonize them. <laughs> My God, colonize somewhere else. We don't know. It's a rock or something. They would have loved that guy because he would have shot them towards their enemy without the enemy knowing. This guy has a lot of power. He has a lot of knowledge. You no, know, I'm told he has, he has some, he's preparing, he's organizing, and he's already starting to offer internet from the space. And he's calling it Starlink. So very soon we'll have internet that can penetrate even in the and down and up wherever he wants to go. Because he is thinking beyond us. I'm told he is also having another company he is calling, he, he calls it Neuralink. Neuralink is a company that is trying to connect people to the computer. So that he can be like Elijah who can read people from there. Yeah, we would like to have Elon Musk on our side. He can give us neural link to be able to read that and know what you are thinking. And he can give me power to shoot to whatever I want any time like this. And this guy has another company that is digging tunnels. And currently he is joining cities. I'm telling you this guy is amazing. Is he? He is amazing. Yes. It's good to have him as one of us. Yeah. So if they handed such a guy. They would have loved it, but they never had him. But let me tell you, with mask or no mask, this battle cannot be won with the things that we see, the eyes. Yes, mask has this, what he calls falcon heavy, but this falcon heavy is not, is not compared, cannot be compared to what God can do in the secret of, our, of the night. Well, the truth be known, even if he had all this, the battle was already won because of something. And I hear someone asking me, Pastor, what was that? This guy, if he had all those things, he would have won. There was a factor that was giving the Israelites, those small, though without the, 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 the capabilities of the Arameans, you see, brothers and sisters, it was not only, it was not even Elisha who was determining things here. Though the Syrians and the Israelites lived in that same geographical region, they were separated only by whom they worshipped. That is why while Syrians trusted in their abilities, Israelites were listening to a certain voice. And the voice was coming from the prophet Elisha. And the Elisha would see whatever they were thinking. He would see whatever they were planning. He would see whatever strategy, whether it was from a Chinese book or from wherever. They could not defeat the mind of God who was with the people of Israel. 
And that's why one morning when the servant of a prophet wakes up and sees a mighty army surrounding them with the chariots, he got scared. Just like we can get scared even though we are in the church. When things happen, we get scared. We get scared by many things. We are currently being scared by corona. But the prophet tells his servant, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The servant looks and says, what? I can't see what are you talking about. But the prophet is seeing what he cannot see. Until then the prophet says, God, open his eyes that he may be able to see what is happening around. That we don't depend on things. I brought with me, I forgot to show you when I was studying, that I was trying to come up with ideas of how to show this. And I needed to buy these things. But I bought one chip. So we are told now, we don't depend on the, what? What is this? Binoculars. Wow, wow, wow. We don't depend on that. The, the servant is looking and they, where are they? I can't see them, but the prophet can see them neck, with the naked eyes. We don't depend on looking with that one to see where Musk is going to colonize. To see the stones that he is going to take over. But we have God who sees beyond the telescopes and the binoculars of this life. He can help us to see our power. He can help us to see our protection. He can help us to see the presence of God in the midst of chaos. Friends, the telescopes and binoculars are nothing before God. Arameans can get thousands of them. They can take their children to the best schools, the MITs and Stanford and Harvard of the time. They can go and buy stuff from SpaceX or from Boeing or from Amazon. But God is on the side of Israelites and no matter what they do, they will win. So how is this relevant to us today, brothers and sisters? You see, it is possible to easily get busy with the family, with the career, with the school, with the ministry. Name all these things. And forget the part of God in our lives. At that point, we are only chasing and focusing, using our binoculars and using our telescopes and using all the gadgets that we have that we can be talking about digging the tunnels and flying up with Falcon Heavy. We do that every day. We do it in our careers. We do it every day in our jobs. We do it in our families. Yeah, too busy with your family, with your spouse. Where is the voice of God? Are you hearing the voice of Elisha? Do you give the voice, do you give a part of God to play in your life? Do you allow the word of God to speak to your daily things? We need God, brothers and sisters, to guide us. I'm reminded of a musician called Clara Scott, who sang, Open my eyes. That I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for, for me. Open my eyes, illumine me, spirit divine. You know what? It means that there are truths that we cannot see with our physical eyes, brothers and sisters. You can remain in the church forever, just like this servant of the prophet was walking with him everywhere. But he was not seeing anything. You can be here for 100 years, but your eyes may not be able to see until when you tell God, open my eyes. Open my eyes that I may understand even when I go through difficult situations. That's why we need the Spirit of God in our lives. We need the Spirit of God to illuminate in us. And the Spirit of God is not very far from us. The Spirit of God is just next to us. As I finish, let me say this. As evident in Elisha's story, God intends us to see his presence, to see his protection. 
at a time when we, everybody is scared. We need to see his provision when there's nothing we are seeing. Currently, brothers and sisters, even in this city here in Grand Island, there are many people who are jobless. And maybe they are scared about tomorrow. They are scared about their rent. They are scared about their, their health. They are scared about many things. If you are one of them, I pray that God will open your eyes and he will help you to see his presence in your life. That he will illumine you to see his embrace upon your life. That is not because you have a big bank account. Those are the, the, the binoculars that we have of this life. It's not because you have a stable job, brothers and sisters. It's not because of those things. If you find yourself lonely, though, with, though amongst people, call on him today. I can see there's computers, the screens are dark, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what is that which is scaring you today? Tell it to God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4 that the God of this age has blinded, has blinded many people, many believers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ before them. May God open our eyes to see the glory of Christ. May the Lord put in us the desire that we can cry to him to increase our faith. That we will surrender to God's spirit to touch our failing vision. To see the greatness of God. The faith that sees possibilities where others see impossibilities. To experience calmness and peace when everybody else is around us is nervous and scared. That the visual equity that the prophet Elisha was, was talking about can be put in our eyes that we can be able to see. You know what? You, your, what, what your eyes see, what your physical eyes see is nothing compared to what the spiritual eyes of God can help you to see around you. We need the prophet in our marriages. We need the, the voice of the prophet in our families. We need the voice of God in our churches. We need the voice of God in our country. A time like now. You see, you can receive him in your life today. If you accept Christ and tell him, Lord, take over in my life. This is the promise we are given in the book of John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. That was the promise that Jesus gave unto us. Yes, your safety will not come from gazing eye to the stars with the telescopes of this world or jumping eye with the, with, with the falcon heavies from SpaceX. It is not from digging deeply tunnels or having the best internet that goes deep into the water and goes into the space. No, it is just by having Christ in our lives, by having him in our camp, just like the Israelites dependent on nothing much. I remember sometimes God will tell them, nothing else you do, just go around the town drumming and singing, drumming and singing, and people look at them and say, these people are crazy, is this how people fight? They were not knowing that God does not use what we are used to. God does not utilize the things that our mind are able to comprehend. Sometimes you use things that people see as stupidity, things that don't make sense to defeat the enemy. And when the enemy is defeated, my brothers and sisters, that's not the time to kill him. Because that's what Elisha told them. Don't kill the enemy. Give him food. So sometimes you'll find your enemy coming, knocking at your door. That's not the time to tell him you are stupid. Now come, kneel down here. That's the time to show them the grace of God in their lives. So trust him to lead your life today. Allow his word to guide you daily. May he open our eyes to see 
his glory. Amen. God bless you.